everybody, welcome to CYC. I would like to remind you all to follow us on social media. So that's Facebook, YouTube, and the website. Um, welcome to our show, Heroes Forever. My name is Carol, and we have with us here today. Hi, my name is Anastasia. Hi, my name is Steven. And this is our show, Heroes Forever. Before we start, I want to remind everybody why we chose the name Heroes Forever. Anna, do you remember? Um, because um, like our the heroes in heaven, they're like they're they're forever. They can't die because they're in heaven. Yeah, Stephen. What about like the heroes like in the world, like the celebrities and the famous people? What about them? Are they forever? No. Yeah. Yeah, they are forever, but they are not gonna be heroes. So their, their like, legacy is not forever. That's why our show is called Heroes Forever, because we talk about saints. We talk about people in our church, people that are close to God, people that their stories and their spirits, they live on forever. But the heroes we hear about in the world, like the celebrities and the famous people, we forget about them soon enough. Once they die, new people will come out. Do you know famous people in like year 200? No. No, but we know saints in year 200 right? Their stories go on forever, okay? So today, guys, we're talking about St. Mary of Egypt. Do you know St. Mary of Egypt? No. 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 So she's not the same St. Mary, like the mother of Jesus. Her, it's a different saint. Her name is St. Mary also, but it's not the mother of Jesus, okay? And we call her St. Mary of Egypt. So that's how we tell the difference. There was like a monk and a priest. His name was Father Zosima, okay? And he lived in a country called Palestine. Where did he live? Palestine. Palestine. Palestine, okay? So this is like a country in the Middle East, okay guys? So he lived in Palestine and one day he was walking in the desert for a long, long time. He kept walking and walking and while he's walking, he's praying the Psalms, he's like um, praising God and, and constantly he's praying in the back of his mind, okay? Okay. And while he was walking, guys, he saw like this shadow or like a human figure and he was a little confused he didn't know what it was he was like a little scared a little shocked he didn't know what it was so he tried to run after this figure okay and he tried to run after it and see it and this human figure ran away from him okay and it was actually saint mary of egypt but he didn't know that so he asked her a question and you guys are going to act this next part out for us okay 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 what's the question he asked her who are you in God's name, don't run away. Father Zosima, I am a woman. Throw me your cloak so that I may cover myself. Who are you? I came from Egypt. At the age 12, I went to Alexandria without my parents' permission. Good job. So she continued on to tell him the story about how she was in Egypt and she ran away from her parents and she like after she ran away she lived a life of sin she was very far from god she hung out with bad people and she was just like away from her parents away from the church away from everything that could be good for her okay and then when she was in her 20s she was a little bit older so she lived in that life for a long time far away from the church for a long time about over 10 years okay and when she was like in her 20s she decided she's gonna take a trip and travel to Jerusalem where like Jesus where he had his cross and where his tomb was and she wanted to see where all of these things and she wanted to like look at them okay just out of curiosity so she went on this trip to Jerusalem okay and while she was there there was like the big church and when she was trying to enter the church she couldn't it's like there was like an invisible force that was stopping her from entering the church can you guys imagine? No. It's a little bit crazy, right? Like, it's like you're trying to walk through a door and you can't, like something is pulling you back. Oh, that's funny. Like there was no one holding her. There was no one touching her. But every time she tried to like go in the door, it's like something was pulling her back or like there was like an invisible wall. Or like invisible man. Yeah, it's like something that she didn't know what it was, but like it wasn't letting her enter the church, you know? So she... She like remembered that she was living very far from the church and that's the reason she couldn't go in. So you know what she did? She kind of like sat in front of the church 
and she started crying and she started praying and she saw the icon of St. Mary, St. Mary the mother of God. Okay, so we have two different St. Marys here. We have St. Mary of Egypt and that's the saint we're talking about today. And we have St. Mary the mother of Jesus. Okay, so St. Mary of Egypt, she couldn't enter the church. So she decided that she was going to sit outside of the church and she started crying and praying. And she saw the picture of St. Mary, mother of God, mother of Jesus. Okay? okay. And she started praying and she said that if she's allowed to enter the church, she's going to repent. She's going to change completely her life. She's going to, and she's going to like commit her entire life to God and Jesus. Okay. So what did she do guys? She committed her whole, like, she had to commit her whole life to Jesus to enter the church. Exactly, that's right. And Stephen, do you think she was able to enter? No. No, she was. God is so loving and He's so merciful. Once she, like, repented and once she prayed within her heart and once she went back to Him and changed the way she was living, she was able to go back in. And she went in the church, she prayed, she took communion, and then there was a voice that came and talked to her. And she heard this voice and it said something to her. What did the voice say to her? Go to Jupiter. Zabit, uh, Go to the Zabitin. Jordan. Jordan. So the Jordan was a river. And it's where John the Baptist was baptizing people. And we know the story of how Jesus went to John the Baptist and was baptized by him, right? So she went over to the Jordan, the river. And she kept walking until she got there. And there was actually the church of John the Baptist. So there was a church over there named after John the Baptist because that's where he what? That's he where. baptized people. Exactly. So she went over there. She also took communion in that church. And then she kept walking in the desert for 17 years. Seventeen years, guys. Can you imagine? No. She had nowhere to live. She had no home, just in the desert for seventeen years. And it was. It would get really, really hot at sometimes. Really, really cold at sometimes. Her clothes started to fall apart. So that's why when she met Father Zosima, she asked him for his cloak, right? Because her clothes were kind of like ripped. And like she would just eat like some fruits and berries and dates that she would find in the desert, very small things, and like that's how she was living. Okay, so when she found Father Zosima and he asked her that question and the part you guys acted out for us, he asked her, um, when was the last time you took communion? And she told him the last time she took communion was in John the Baptist's church 17 years ago. So he agreed with her that every year he's gonna come during Lent on Covenant Thursday. So that's the day like, it's the day before Good Friday, where Jesus, like we celebrate the day where Jesus broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. It's like the Last Supper. Uh, it's the very first time anybody took communion, right? Where Jesus like, gives the disciples his body and his blood. So he told her that every year on Covenant Thursday or the day of the Last Supper, he's gonna come and he's gonna meet her in the same exact spot and he's gonna bring communion, okay? So they agreed to exactly, she, she went her way, he went his way, and they each continued to live in the desert for a whole year on their own. Okay, guys? Mm -hmm. And then one year after that, it was what, what day? Um, what did we say, what day did he say he's going to go meet her? Our, the Last Supper? Yeah, it was the day of the Last Supper. It's called Covenant Thursday. Okay. So he took over like some food, like in a basket, and he took the communion and he went to go meet her. And like he actually did, he got to the Jordan and he found her walking towards him and he gave her communion. They talked for a little bit and then they each went, went back their separate ways. He saw her walking one way and he walked another way. Okay. And they agreed again next year, same day. What day? Uh, yeah. Uh, the covenant, the cover, uh, the covenant? covenant? Covenant Thursday. So he agreed again that next year on Covenant Thursday, he's going to come and he's again going give, to give her what to take? Communion. Communion. Food and communion, right? He meets her every year. So that's what they agreed on. The next year, when he went to go give her like the communion, he didn't find her. You know what he found instead? Her dead body. Yeah, he found her dead body. It was laying in the same spot. 
And there was like in the sand, there was almost like a note written on in the sand, like kind of like as if somebody wrote it with their finger. And Anna, what did the note say? It said, Father Zosima, bury the body of humble Mary. Pray for me. Mm, pray for me. Yeah, so it said to bury the body. And she asked him to pray for him. And the note said one more thing. Do you remember? Yeah. Um, the day I died was when I took, when I received communion. Yeah, so the note also said that the last, the day she died was last year, exactly one year ago, when she took communion. So Father Zosima was like confused and he was like amazed because there was a miracle. Her body stayed the way it was for a whole year, guys. You guys know, after somebody dies, their body kind of like turns back to dust. Yeah. Because God created us from dust. So after we die, our body kind of goes back to dust. But he was surprised that her body, nothing happened to it Wait, for a whole year. Doesn't it take like only a few days? Uh... Yeah, it takes only a few days, like less than a week for the body to kind of like go back to how it was. But with her, like a whole year, God protected her body. And you know what the really cool thing, guys, was? So in the note, it asked him to bury the body. So the, like he was like getting old at the time and he couldn't really like dig the grave to put the body in. So you know what came to help him? An angel or a saint? Mm -mm, a lion. Whoa. A lion came out of the desert and it came and dug the grave with him. And he helped Father Zosima open up the grave so they can take the body and put it inside. Wait, one minute. Doesn't, it doesn't even make any sense. Does it, uh, don't, uh, lions don't live in a desert. It's a miracle. It's a miracle, right? The lion came out of nowhere and it came and all it did was like dig in the sand, dig up the grave so that they can take, so that he can take St. Mary of Egypt and put her in the grave. Let's see if you guys are paying attention, okay? I'm going to ask you some questions. Ready? Okay. Okay. What country was Father Zosima originally living in? The, uh, um, Kansas. Do you remember? It starts with a P. Yeah. It's a big name. It's called Palestine. 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 Okay. And what did he see when he was praying? Uh, a woman. Oh, uh, so like, uh, the like shadow. a shadow. A shadow of a, a person running. Yeah, he saw like a shadow or a figure and he didn't know who it was. Who was it? It was Mary of the Saint Mary of Egypt. Saint Mary of Egypt. Is that the same Saint Mary, like Mother of Jesus? No. 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 Okay. So what did she tell him? Stephen, what did she tell him? Uh, she told him, give me your clothes uh, to cover myself. Yeah, she asked him like to give him her, his jacket so that she can cover herself, so that she can come and talk to him. Because we said what her clothes were ripped almost like from walking in the desert all day for 17 years. So she was walking in the desert for 17 years, okay? And then after he gave her that, she told him her story. What did she tell him? Her, what, what was the story she told him, Anna? Um, that I came from Egypt and that at the age of 12, I went, I ran to Alexandria without my parents' permission. Yeah, good job. She told him that like she's originally from Egypt, not Palestine, and that she ran away from her parents and that when she was away from her parents, she was very far from the church and she lived a life of sin, okay? Okay. Where did she go where she couldn't enter the church? What was the name of the city? Um, um, uh, John, St. John, Christ, uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So she went to Jerusalem because that's where Jesus, like the cross was and that's where his tomb was. And she went, she was curious. She wanted to see those things, right? Okay. After she went to Jerusalem, could she enter the church there? No. No, no she couldn't. So she prayed and promised God something. What did she promise him, Stephen? I uh, promise that you will, uh, like, a uh, craze. I don't know. I remember. You remember? Yeah, that um, she will have to give everything up to go to the church. Yeah, she said that she's going to give up her whole life and she's going to repent and she's going to change the way she was living. And she decided, and she was able to go to the church, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay. After she went in the church, she walked out and there was a voice that said something to her. Do you remember what the voice said? Yeah. Uh, uh, go to uh, uh, Zip, uh, Zip Jordan. Zip yeah. Zip go to the Jordan. So she went to the Jordan. She went to the church. And how many years was she walking around in the desert, guys? After 17 the, years. 17, 17 years. Until she ran into? The, until she ran into, into the Jordan. No, father? Father, father of... Uh, what's his name? Father... Uh, Zosima. Father? Say Zosima. Father Zosima. Zosima. Yes, until she found Father, Father Zosima, mm -hmm. he gave her communion the next year, and then the year after that, when he when he went to see her, what did he find? The dead, her body. dead body. Her dead body. And then it, what? There was a note, right? It said, "I I died from like uh, the last the last time." The he gave her communion, yeah. so it said that she died a year ago, right? Wait one minute. How could have she wrote that? When when she was dead, yeah, it's a miracle. She probably didn't write it herself. Probably I, like or God wait, wrote it or like maybe an angel she, came uh, Maybe she think that maybe she think she will die, and she went to the over the to the desert, and she wrote that thing. And when she died, uh, she her body was. Dead. So we don't know exactly okay. how the note was written. Yeah, and then who helped Father Zosima dig the grave? A uh, lion. Good job. It was a lion. Okay, you guys paid attention. Good job. I'm proud of you. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching our episode. Um, bye. bye. bye.